Here in this video, I want to show my progress with Arduino, give credit to Jeremy Blum and to the folks at Adafruit, and to show why I chose Ber Jeremy Blum's recent book, Exploring Arduino. This won't be a video where I take the viewer through a whole construction project. Rather, it'll simply demonstrate six projects that I have done with a short demo of each and explaining why I chose it and what I learned from it. My first project with Arduino was this data gathering and data logging device for my wood gas to electric power generation experiments. I studied just enough Arduino to get this data logger running and it is doing a great job. I needed to measure pressures and temperatures. I wanted to be able to see all those measures in real time as well as logging the data for future analysis. The project now consists of about a thousand lines of code, tracks three temperatures using one thermistor and two MAC 6675 type thermocouple amplifiers, eight pressure sensors using freescale differential pressure sensors. It has one marker push button over here that allows me to sync recorded data with handwritten notes. Real-time re readout is by a four-line 20-character LCD screen and all data is recorded on a four gigabyte card. using the included SD uh, uh, card breakout board. It also reads and records data from an engine throttle position sensor and a narrow band oxygen sensor which hook up right here. I learned how to average readings and to put one pressure and one temperature reading out to a set of visual traffic lights so I can see overall performance from across the room. I even learned to make my own simple little PC boards here during that part of the process. In addition to learning how to utilize and read all those sensors, I had to learn how to make all that code work in a seamless manner. I might add that Jeremy Blum's YouTube tutorials and those from Adafruit have been immeasurably helpful to me. But now I want to learn more about using all that data to actually do things to the equipment that I am monitoring and how to take advantage of some of the more complex commands that the Arduino IDE has available for sensors and output devices that are around. By that I mean I want to learn more about commands that I haven't had to use yet, sensors that do things I haven't tried, and about output devices in general. So when Jeremy Blum's new book, Exploring Arduino, became available, I bought a copy, read it cover to cover a couple of times, then selected the five projects that I thought would best enhance my knowledge now. The things I wanted to learn, how and why to use timers and interrupts, because I want to eventually design a good electronic ignition system how H-bridge ICs work, because I want to be able to drive DC motors to open and close valves. How distance sensors work, just because I think they're cool and I really want to understand the various types. And what's the big deal about button debouncing and why use Schmidt triggers? Because I eventually want to use a lot of buttons to change the kinds of variables and system conditions that are to be displayed on my LCD screen. And how do you implement servos? Again, I want to be able to use them under computer control to open and close valves. How and when to implement external power supplies. For one thing, I don't want to burn out my Arduino by drawing too much current. For another, I will need more power and higher voltages than my Arduino can supply for the various output devices I intend to use. And although I started out with a Mega 2560, which has lots of GPIO ports, what can be done to get more ports from an Uno? Because the deeper I get into this Arduino thing, the more ideas I get where I don't need all the GPIO ports that are in a 2560, so why spend the extra money? 
All Arduinos accept analog inputs, but most don't provide analog outputs. So how do digital potentiometers work to provide that function? I just want to know that I have that capability to provide an analog output if I need it. Sound. Although I don't care much about sound or music from an Arduino, I know there's a tone library built somewhere into the IDE. I want to learn at least a little bit about how tone works, because I might want to have some sort of complex tones to use as warnings on some future projects. Chapter 12, Fun with Sound. Timers, Interrupts, and Schmidt Triggers are the uh, learnings for me from this one. Someday I want to work on an ignition controller for a certain old ATV machine, so I know I will need to understand interrupts to control ignition timing events. And timers need to be used with interrupts, since you can't use the delay command while an interrupt is running. So this simple looking project actually has a lot going on. It is using the tone library of the Arduino IDE to create a set of ever increasing frequency tone bursts. But one can use a button press to move the bass frequency up a notch. Whenever you want to, without having to wait for the Arduino's IDE loop to cycle back to the button press event in the code. This is done with a Schmidt trigger debounce button and an interrupt. This project is from Chapter 7, Bar Graph. And the learnings here are how to use shift registers and distance sensors. Each shift register that you add to an Arduino effectively adds eight output pins minus the one it's connected to. Here, one Arduino pin drives eight the eight LEDs in this example. In the books project, a sharp IR sensor is used to turn distance to an object into a bar graph. The sharp IR distance sensor uh, sends an analog signal to the program, but I didn't have one of those, so I converted the code to use a parallax ping sensor instead, uh, and it actually reports the time in microseconds that it takes for a ping to go out, hit something, and to return, so someone has to calculate the distance, the actual distance, uh, from that info. This was a good exercise for me, and here's how the thing works. Obviously, as we come closer and closer, more and more of the LEDs go out till they're all out uh, when you're really close, anyhow. So you get the idea how that works. This experiment is Speaker from Chapter 9. It highlights digital potentiometers and use of the SPI bus. Since neither the Arduino Uno or the Mega 2560 have analog outputs, I wanted to learn how analog outputs could be produced. The digital, digital potentiometer is one answer. The output of the three LEDs is being varied via analog voltage changes by three of the four digital potentiometers, there are two on each chip, that are on the breadboard, and not by PWM. While the circuit and the software make the light output vary, tone is operating in the background to drive the speaker's frequency, but the fourth digital pot is making the speaker's volume rise and fall.
sweep, chapter 4, demonstrating the use of an RC servo, a separate power supply, a 9-volt battery in this particular case, and a linear power regulator, and also an IR distance sensor. Since the servo draws more power that can get, than it can get from the Arduino, it needs a separate power supply, hence the 9-volt battery. But the servo only wants 5 volts, so this circuit includes a linear power regulator to reduce the battery's 9-volt output to 5 volts. The IR sensor is glued to the servo, as you can see here. The servo is programmed to sweep to four positions in an arc a little shorter than 180 degrees. It stops momentarily at each position while the distance sensor reads the distance. The distance is converted to an appropriate PWM output proportional to the distance seen by the sensor at that position. The PWM signal illuminates an LED in proportion to the distance closer equals brighter. Then it moves to the next position and so on, finally resetting and doing it all over again. The project called for all four LEDs to be blue, but I used LEDs of differing colors here and learned how much the light output varies from one color of LED to another for a given current. I had to make large changes in series resistance values to make them more or less equal in brightness for a given PWM percentage. Last here is uh, from chapter 4 and this is uh, H-Bridge DC motor control. So I'm learning how to use H-Bridges and I'm also learning again how to use a separate power supply. A DC motor, which is right here, uh, is, more, is likely to draw more current from the Arduino than the Arduino can supply. So a separate 9 volt battery is used for demonstration purposes. The H-bridge is capable of driving motors in both directions and at varying speed. A potentiometer is used here for demonstration purposes. The H-bridge, uh, I'm sorry, the potentiometer is used to tell the H-bridge what to do. The potentiometer, when, when roughly in the center, as it is here, tells the motor to stop. When the pot is turned clockwise, the motor goes faster and faster in one direction. When it's turned counterclockwise, it goes faster and faster in the other direction. And I don't know if you'll be able to see the little tiny red flag that's on, that's on here, but uh, if I go slightly one direction, it goes faster and faster. If I turn the potentiometer in the other direction, it just goes slower and faster the other way. So this is a fairly simple one, but I actually wanted to try an H-bridge out. Let's see how slow I can get it to go here. Yeah. And I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear the tiny little PWM pulses. Okay.